Hi, Vanessa. Lovely having you with us today. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And you, Sonia? Great, because you're going to tell us about this beautiful exhibition you've been working on for a few months, I think, to prepare. Uh, an exhibition opening at Chaumet on the 5th of October, running through the 5th of November. And it's focusing on a really exciting area, which is 1965 to 1985. So what did you, Chaumet, and you, in collaboration, pick the specific decades? So, in fact, the idea was very much coming from uh, working to the archives of the house and discovering some, I would say, new jewels, new to me, because, of course, they date back to the 70s. But it was very new to me to realize how much Chaumet had been an avant-garde jeweler during this period. So it came up with some specific jewels, especially a gold ear ornament that I found completely contemporary, although it was made in 1970. And then when I realized this, I decided to dive a, a bit deeper into the archive of the house and into the history of the house uh, during this period to discover a whole complete universe of avant-garde and bold jewels uh, created by Maison Chaumet in a specific context, because um, obviously the 70s were a very special era for many reasons. And it, it was a whole discovery to find all these jewels and to find the extent of the creation that is not only linked to just the jewels, but also going to having a second boutique open called L'Arcade on Place Vendôme. So all of this was the beginning of looking into more and to finally come up with this exhibition, Un Âge d'Or, A Golden Age. So tell us, why is on display in L'Âge d'Or? Ah. A golden age. So the name golden age is probably linked to the fact that during the 70s, a lot of yellow gold was uh, used. That's a very interesting fact, because when you think about it, at the beginning of the 70s, gold was, as we would say today, cheap. <laughs> so yellow gold was relatively cheap. And during the 70s, the prices went from something like $35 an ounce up to $800 something an ounce. It was completely crazy in terms of value, the yellow gold. So it was still one of the materials the most used at the time. It's interesting also to see that it's always a cycle in jewelry. So in the 60s was a bit more white, the, the metal. In the 70s became yellow again or something like this. So you can see the cycle coming, but really the 70s were pretty much yellow gold. And it's funny because then later in the history of jewelry, when you look at it later in the 90s, 80s and 90s, it was coming back to white. And now I see that yellow is coming back greatly in fashion right now. So it's always a cycle. I think it's very interesting. Also an age d'or, so a golden age, because during this period, the workshops at Chaumet had really a focus on working metal. So working metal, of course, gold, but not only. Bronze was also very much used, which is very interesting because not a lot of jewelers were, were using this specific metal with its patina, this color that is so different from any other color in metal. So the work on metal and especially on yellow gold in terms of texture, in terms of polish, in terms of all these type of techniques applied to gold uh, is very important. And some of the jewels at L'Arcade were in fact only made of gold. So no stones. So it's in interesting because the work, the savoir-faire of the house, the, the great savoir-faire and excellence of the house was very much represented into these uh, collections of, of jewels at this period. And if we want to go a bit more specifically into the creations, I think there were two big names that people are going maybe to discover, rediscover in this exhibition. Can, can you tell us a bit more about these really innovative creators who were so closely associated with the history of Chaumet during that period? Yes, yeah, so in fact, we can see from the mid-60s a sort of shift in the creation. That's what we're going to show in the exhibition. So uh, Chaumet was already what it was, as it's always been, like a high jury haute joaillerie uh, maison. And then in parallel to this, so not replacing this, I'm, I'm just mentioning because it's important. It's not that there was a decision to move uh, from something to another. It was just a decision to add something to the offer that was already there. The second offer, the other uh, path, 
was one of very creative artistic jewels. So the main focus was not especially on fine stones or precious stones, diamonds, and it was more on the aspect of aesthetics. So that would be the volumes, the proportions, the design itself. At the time, the studio of the house was headed by someone called René Morin, his name I didn't know much, I have to say, before I started to dig deep into the archives. And he, in fact, is probably the hand or the spirit behind a lot of the jewels that we consider as being super innovative and super avant-garde. He was not the only one, but he was the person in-house to really work on this and really decide of the spirit, of course, with the Chaumet brothers who were heading the house. But it was really this collaboration that led to this very bold idea of a collection for l'Arcade. Um, so his name is very important because he's probably the one that had the most influence on the jewels that we will see in the exhibition. Another name that is a bit more well-known would be Pierre Sterlet, that we don't have to introduce normally because on his own, as a jeweler, he was already very famous. He had collaborated with Chaumet from a long time. He started in the 30s. So it's really a very long collaboration. It's just that during the 70s, he went on working exclusively for Chaumet and there developed also some jewels that were also in parallel with the ones of René Morin. Very, again, big volumes, another take and another idea of the theme of nature and flora uh, through his uh, designs that were pretty much to be compared to sculptures more than to jewels. Just so happened that you can wear your sculptures. So that's that's pretty cool. And you can really recognize, in fact, their two hands in the jewels because they have different views. They have in common something that is really more on the artistic side for the jewelry. And based really a focus being put on design. Very important. I suppose design more than material. I mean, you mentioned maybe before the the use of gold with the gemstones or the diamonds that we associate with hydro and plasma dome. So do you have some examples of this more like uh, maybe groundbreaking pieces of jewelry that, that came out from the workshop during these years? Yes, you have. In fact, it's just in terms of value, it's just a way to shift how you put value also on a jewel. So... Uh, high jewelry, of course, is what it is. So you have some materials that are very precious, whether it be platinum, gold, or diamonds, sapphires, and, and stones like this. They have like a value that is important, that is part of the final value, of course, of the jewel. When you go into a more artistic path, the value is put on the artistry, meaning on the aesthetic. It doesn't mean that you cannot have also some precious materials, which is uh, the case here. You have gold, you have a lot of incredible stones, but really the value would be more on the product itself at the end, meaning an object that is considered almost like a work of art. So you have these designs, you have some jewels that are, as I was saying, the use of bronze and the use of gold together is very interesting. There is a very important uh, necklace with some ginkgo leaves, very important when you see it in terms of volumes. Usually the jewels from L'Arcade, L'Arcade being the second boutique that was opened in 1970 on Place Vendôme, second boutique for Chaumet, solely dedicated to the Arcade collection, being this collection of specific jewels. When you see them, you have an understanding also that they were not worn the same way as other jewels. So maybe, in a way, it's very strange because you can say that you can wear them every day, but also they are so different from anything else that they make you stand out. So I always say when I see these jewels, the ones that you will see in the exhibition, that if you wear one of these arriving at any party, you will be the talk of the evening. Absolutely. Because they stand out so much. We're not talking, I have to say, about discrete little jewels. We're talking about jewels that have something to say. And it's interesting because it was really one of the catchphrases on the ads of Chaumet at the time during the 70s. Chaumet, des bijoux qui ont quelque chose à dire. So that's Chaumet, jewels that have something to say. Which is exactly what it is. When you see them, you there is a reaction. You understand? It's really a reaction to to the piece itself and to its volume and to, to its artistry. So yes, some jewels 
This one I'm talking about, the ginkgo, bronze, and hammered gold necklace. Very important. And you see the work on the metal, the gold being hammered gold, and then the bronze. You have a, a feeling also of something with inspiration from ancient jewels, because you can feel that through the techniques of hammered gold and the technique on the bronze. And at the same time, it's super modern. So it's great, the use of ancient techniques that the workshop decided to, because they had the knowledge, they had the savoir-faire, absolutely, to use these different metals in different type of uh, techniques, but to put it to good use for something super contemporary at the time and very modern in the end and completely timeless when you, when you see that. Most of the jewels that you know, have in the exhibition, I have to say, a lot of people would not know if we didn't tell them that they were made 50 years ago. They would think it's been made last year because that's what timeless is. And it's very difficult to achieve. You can't know when you do it because that's what you try. But the result 50 years after looking at them from half a century later really tells us as much as the timeless of the creation. So that's very interesting. That's fascinating. And I think from what I understand, you also put the exhibition into context, the jewels into context. So it's not just the jewels that are really outstanding and making a statement and telling you about jewelry, artistry. You also put them in relation to fashion and the art of yeah. the so Can you tell us a bit more for people who won't see the exhibition, but at least to have a feel for what was this period of intense creativity and other objects that bring together this exhibition, that put the, the jewelry into context of what was happening in fashion and decorative art at the time? Yes, in fact, discovering all these jewels and putting them together as a collection for an exhibition, you understand also that they need to be put into that context because it's not that they make no sense. It's just that you don't understand the power of them if you don't put them in their original context. And especially because the 70s were probably an era, a decade that was so interesting to revisit now because of a lot of reasons, whether it be music or fashion or decoration, you name it. It was very interesting. A lot of people were pushing boundaries to the maximum of what they could. Uh, maybe too much sometimes, but that's fine. I always say it's always fine to go even a bit too much, but at least that means you're trying to move forward. It was also a very troubled era for a lot of reasons. Conflict around the world in terms of economy, it was not so easy. You had some very important events uh, that were having people struggling uh, with the economy. But still, there was a sense of freedom. There was a sense of hope that everything will be going in the right direction. So I'm not saying that this happened in the end, but people were very hopeful, I think, during the 70s for their future. And the arts were going all the way all around, very different from what it was before, because it's also what we see now as being contemporary art and all of these type of things came from this era. So we thought it would be important also to show in the context of what it was. Also because, as I tell you, the jewels that we see in the exhibition, some of them you would feel are very contemporary because they're timeless, so they look contemporary. I wanted to put them back into their context because then they get even more avant-garde when you see what was uh, the era. So we thought it would be interesting to have a sort of time capsule for people. So when they enter the exhibition, they will enter not a room of jewels, but a room in the 1970s. So that's what is interesting, I think, in the exhibition also, is to try to put a bit of context around it. So we've been very lucky that we have a bit of fashion also in the exhibition from Paco Rabanne and Dior. So that's also because these two houses during the 70s were very important and it allows us to display probably what the type of fashion that you would wear wearing these jewels. So that's also interesting. We have some great furniture by Pierre Poulain, who was one of the great designers of the time and worked for the French president at the time for the Palais de l'Elysée to decorate the whole place. So we have different elements of art, of interior design, of fashion, uh, the music that will be also in the exhibition that will be the music from the 70s. So the idea is a bit to enter into this space. Of course, we can't make it like a complete bubble of the 70s, but it's really a step into this era because that will put the jewels into that context. And when you see some of these jewels and you will feel they are so different from what we could imagine, it's great to see them into this context of the 70s to understand even more 
how avant-garde they were, because it's always easy 50 years after to look at something and say, that's normal now. But yeah, it was not completely normal in the 1970s to have the boutique Chaumet had on Place Vendôme. It's just an example, but in 1970, when they opened the Arcade boutique on Place Vendôme, so the second boutique of Chaumet, the boutique itself was open all the time. There was no door, so you could enter. It was imagined as an art gallery. You could enter the place, just visit like this, and you would have some sound and light inside the place. So you would have different lights of different colors to present you the jewels. You would have music, like the origin of electronic music was already there in 1970. Some of the jewels were worn directly and would be presented to you as being worn by a woman. You would see exactly how it looked like on someone. It was so different from 50 years ago, how jewels were presented in the boutique, which was very different. But there was suddenly even the way the jewels were presented to the clients uh, was very different. So it was a whole concept. It's not only the jewels. That's what I want to say. It's not only the jewels. It's also creating a boutique around it, creating a way to present them. So that's really going into this specific past to the end of it. It's not just little jewels that you would feel, oh, I have two or three jewels like this in this uh, type of design. No, no, it's a whole collection. First collection of L'Arcade was 250 jewels. So it's not like 10 jewels, it's not the capsule, it's a whole collection. So that means the real intention behind this is really going forward with this specific type of jewels. That's a whole concept in parallel to the high jewelry of Shomi. That's fascinating. And tell me, Vanessa, if people fell in love with this type of jewelry, will they be able to obviously not buy it from the exhibition, but is it the type of jewelry that comes up at auction? Is it in estate dealers? Do you see it as actually available or people who are lucky enough to have bought it, have passed it on and it's kept in private collections? So I think the people who have such jewels are wearing them. I love that. <laughs> lucky them. But I have to say that the few that we have seen coming up at auctions, the prices have gone up <laughs> so much. And I understand because there is a renewed interest for the era and people start again, 50 years after, start to have an understanding of what these jewels meant and how they are important. So that's why, of course, years after we have this value are going up so much. I hope this exhibition will, I hope that we will get to see a bit more pieces and that some of them will be shown <laughs> and presented also to Chomet. So Chomet have a possibility to see and know where they are because some of these jewels that we have just the photos, we don't have all the jewels, of course, that were made at the time. So some of the jewels are going to be presented in the exhibition through images and through photos on top of the jewels that will be in the showcase. And some of these, especially very big, important necklaces and parure, very sculptural. These ones, I hope they will come out. And I hope someone will come and visit the exhibition wearing them. I would love this. I would love this. Oh, that's um, an open invite. If you're listening to this podcast, oh, yeah. well, please go and tell Vanessa you're coming. <laughs> yes, please. Please tell me because I would love to see someone wearing them today. And I promise you, if you wear them, everyone is going to know around you. <laughs> because it's so interesting. So um, I imagine it's difficult to find these pieces. As always with period pieces, it's difficult to find pieces and jewels from 50 years ago, which is normal. But you still have some sometimes if you can find, you have to look for them. You have to look for them, but maybe you're going to be lucky and find some. Sure. From what I've seen already, it looks like a, a beautiful exhibition. But for people who are not going to be able to be in Paris from the 5th of October to the 5th of November, how can they learn a bit more about this specific period of uh, Chaumet's innovation and creativity? Is there anything you'd recommend, Vanessa, for people to delve a bit more into this uh, period? This period is not yet completely covered in terms of history. I think it's really because also we are getting to 50 years after. People are, I'm not saying that no one has looked into it, but I'm saying it's not been covered like Art Deco has been covered. For example, you can find a lot of information about our deco period. I'm not talking about a specific jeweler here. I'm talking about in general. So the same with the 70s. It's starting to come in, but 
It's not yet been covered exactly the same way as other periods. And as for Chaumet, during the exhibition on the website of Chaumet, there will be some articles commenting this exhibition. In, in case you can't come and see it, you will have already some information uh, and jewels that you will be able to see on the website. And, and then we're hoping to get more. Uh, soon we'll let you know for sure fantastic thank you so much Vanessa it was such a pleasure hearing what's happening there you know how you recreated a piece of the 70s with Chaumet and showing maybe a, definitely a side that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily associate with Chaumet we always think of the imperial jewelry yeah. the beautiful diamond the exquisite craftsmanship which is present craftsmanship but of course but very different and as you say before avant-garde creations of this period Yeah, and also it's a very fun period. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I hope people will, will like this also, that it's a really fun period that people are happy to revisit because usually when you have images of the 70s in your head, you're going to imagine someone laughing, someone dancing, someone having fun, and that's exactly what it is. I think also these jewels, and it's not, I'm not comparing to anything else, I'm just saying it's also nice to have some jewels that are linked to a joyous era, of seeing something that you want to wear because they bring joy to people. So there is something about this, I think in this exhibition in a golden age, there is something about joy, which I think is very important to link to jewelry also because it should bring joy. And it's exactly what it is with this exhibition, which is very interesting. And you're right, I'm sure people will be surprised by what they're gonna see that they maybe would not have imagined from Chaumet. And it's another side of the house that will be discovered for many people. And I think it's always interesting when you get to do this. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for your time. The Thank exhibition you, is at Chaumet in Paris from the 5th of October, 5th of November. We invite everyone who is able to, to see it, obviously, to go and uh, explore this fascinating period. Thanks, Vanessa. Thank you.